Welcome YouTubers. Today we're going to learn about the user screen bytes. All right, as you can see, I have Nestmaker right here, and then I have my folder with the files for Nestmaker over here. We're using a clean, uh, we're using a clean state Nestmaker install, so all the files are default from the latest version, 4.5.9. And then over here, I got the forums, thanks to Chronicle of Legends. Oh, it's hard to read that way. So Chronicle of Legends. Um, before I was working on Beachmaster on 4.5.6, I think, and Joe from the Nest Maker from the 8-Bit Heroes, he gave me a clue and I actually figured out how to use their user screen bytes from that clue. And then uh, Chronicle of Legends also find out how to get the tiles in there. I didn't even pay attention to the tiles, but uh, as you read this, tutorial right over here also link is going to be in the description but as you read this tutorial over here it talks about the two easy steps where you like you know you're going to add the user screen bytes and then down here you get the bonus of the tiles uh, you can see that you have to go to your do load screen data dot asm and if you notice here you have the code uh, you go to this part of the code and you add this right over here the user screen bytes uh, pointer that starts at 187 so why does it look like that why does it start at 187 well um, <clears throat> I do through trial and error I found out with the numbers the first time I was doing this before uh, this tutorial I was counting the bits to try uh, the variables in the screen info to try to get to that and I got to 187 from counting and miscounting and loading stuff so if you go to the uh, overworld and you can right click, it has view latest export and takes you right to the uh, takes you right to the information for the screens. Uh, and here you start with the collision, and then you start with various bytes over here. Byte one is the screen type, the bank info, the screen palette ID, so on, so on, and then you get all the way down here to byte 68 and it says user screen byte zero but it's not 68 you can tell from the uh, this right here is 187 so how did you get to 187 and I had that problem too you know I was counting there and I couldn't find it and I realized that maybe I have to be in a different order as you start reading the uh, do load screen data then you realize that things are in a different order so that's another problem in its own because do load screen data is not part uh, it's not part of Nestmaker in the uh, script settings so we can go to Nestmaker and go to project project settings and we want to go into scripts and we think we can find it here but it's not here that kind of sucks a little bit but eh, I guess it keeps people away from breaking too many things So to get there, you have to follow the uh, address here and you would go, first you would go into the game engine data and you go into routines then you go to base 4.5, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you go to the, uh, oh shoot, I think the game, yeah I should be reading over here, and then you go to the subroutines and the subroutines have a lot of the code that's going on where you can change a lot of things. And we're looking for the do load screen data. And here it is. Now what I recommend is you make a backup. So you press, you can copy and then you can paste. I do control C, control V and then you got the copy there. Now this is something I want to use with all my Nestmaker games. So I would just edit the original one. You could always, uh, if I guess if you go to project, settings and you go to the uh, script settings and you go to the load subroutines yeah you can go over here and then you can change it you got do load name table 
data right over here. Oh, you know what? That is a good thing. Let's do that. We're going to change. This is my uh, Notepad Plus. I'll just do one window for now so you don't get confused. <clears throat> so this is what we gotta do. What you do here is you save this and you save it as something else. I would recommend going to game engine data. No, uh, going all the way to Nestmaker and go to game engine data. Oh yeah, I think routines, yeah, base four or five. I think right about here, I'm gonna go and make sure we're going to Nest Maker and then we go to project settings and see the first area you can go to is base four or five. That's where you want to go to. So we're gonna go right here. And I'm going to put new. I'm gonna make a new folder and call it I'm gonna call it the uh, Drex template or the GSXCC hater template. I don't know what should I call it. Maybe I should call it the uh, Let's call it the, no, screw it. Let's call it the Nest Maker Plus. Can I use that in there? Yeah, cool. Nest Maker Plus. So we're gonna go in here, and I like to match the uh, file structure here. So I would go to new folder and just call it subroutines. I go there, and then we're gonna save it. Go call it load all subroutines. We'll save it and there <clears throat> now we have our uh, load all subroutines we just saved a new copy and now I'm gonna go to you're gonna have to go to the same spot where all these are at and we're gonna make a new folder so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this copy. And I'm gonna copy this one. And then I'm gonna make a new folder. I'm gonna make a new folder. I'm gonna call it plus. Yeah, we're gonna call it plus. Then I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna paste it. I wish I can put it in the same folder as I have the low subroutines, but it doesn't work that way. With the sub with these right here, you want to be in the same spot. I tried it, I tested it out, it doesn't work. You want to be here. So we're gonna make so we got a new folder here and we got our own do load screen data. And we're gonna load that up and we're gonna close this one. Oh no, we didn't want to close that. Um, oh, sober things. All right, keep that. Anyway, this is the load. This is the do load screen data file here. So as you can see here, it's going to a hundred. Uh, no, it goes from zero, and then it goes to one twenty. Let me uh, zoom in that for you. And it goes to one twenty one, one twenty two, one twenty three, and you're like, you you know, you. You look at these and you and you're looking at the uh this information over here and like these don't match set screen type 120 and it says byte one. Oh man these numbers don't match kind of confusing so i decided that uh, look at all this here collision these must be byte numbers too of course so we're gonna uh we got a row here let's count we got one two three four five six seven eight right and then we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen we got fifteen eight row here and fifteen down here so if i get the conquer layer out oh look at that i got it i did it before <laughs> but anyway um look at this conquer layer out. i put eight times fifteen i get 120 right now also we have to keep in mind that this starts at zero not at one so i'm going to take away one to compensate for the zero <clears throat> excuse me and then we got 119 then i'm going to go to byte 60 was it 68 yes this is where the user screen bytes i'm going to add 68 and what do we get we get 187 
and that's 187 right over here. You can see that's why the pointer is at 187. It was all that collision data that was there. So now we can copy this file thanks to Chronicle of Legends. We can copy this uh, code right here. And we're going to go to I wonder to the uh, load DY182. So I'm just going to find and then I'm going to put 182 and put find next. And bam, there it is. Just after that, put this code block. You can see 182, 196. This makes sense. So well, we want to be between here. So I'm going to put a comment. You use the. Uh, well, you see right there, you use that, uh, what is that, semicolon? I don't know what that's called, but you use that key there. That's the same part as the uh, colon or column. I don't know what it is. It's things you see between the clock. So uh, we're going to put the, when you start with that, it makes it green, and you can do the comment here. I color it green because I think that's maker has it green, or maybe it's green by default. I don't know, but it's better to have your comments a different color than your code. So we're going to put load. I like going writing caps so I can keep track of it. And I'm gonna put my nickname there. We're gonna put Drex there. That way I can put a quick search on Drex to find my custom code. So we're gonna put load user screen bytes. And we got this here. Okay. Now let's go through the code. Let's do some more comedy. This is LDY, it loads, and we use the number sign. There's three types of numbers, as you remember. You can have, we go put here the three, we go put three types of numbers right here. Three types of numbers. Let's space it out. I'll show you, introduce you to that if you're new to coding. So we're gonna, um, <clears throat> You got your regular hashtag, that's a number. Then when you do hashtag and put, that's a number, and you put a dollar sign, it becomes hex. And then you put hashtag, let's get rid of the space here. You put hashtag and a percentage and it becomes binary. So number, hex, and binary. Let's get this in the caps. All right, and we're so, Using a number is probably easy to read things, especially when you're like measuring pixels or doing some big calculations and like you can't really do a hex or especially binary. So you sometimes you want to do a number and then we're pointing to all of these. And it's an eight bit system. So the highest number is 255 and hex that's FF and binary. You know, it's one, 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 one. So we are loading 187 to the Y register. The Y and the X are like the extra accumulators. They do what the accumulator do, but except they're a little bit limited, but you use that to take care of some things. So we load, we're loading 187 to Y. Then we are loading, we are loading the, the collision pointer you know, I never know what those columns means, but anyway. We are loading the collision pointer, so sorry for my lack of understanding on these things. But it has the Y there. And that Y represents this number here. So that's how you can uh, load collision pointer from 187. And this makes it easier when you have to load multiple things or do co other calculations and stuff that you learn in the future on this channel. So we're loading collision player Y, which is now 187. Okay, and then that the it loads into the accumulator. That's what LDA is. Loads into the accumulator, and then you have STA stores the whatever was in the accumulator. So we're gonna take that. And we're going to store it. It stores it into user screen byte zero. So now it's taking 
uh, oh yeah, I haven't showed you here. We go to NestMaker. When you go in here, um, you go to Screen Info, your user screen bytes are right here. They're useless right now. These things don't work. You can type whatever you want and it don't work. Oh, it limits 255, of course. So you can type it and it won't work. It won't show up in the data and you can't use it as reference. You want these numbers to appear in your reference. So this is going to store into user screen by zero when we set it up. These are variables and we haven't set those up. So we got to do that. But that stores into user screen by zero. And then it increases. We have I N Y that increases the Y. So it just increases Y by one. Since it was 187, it's going to change it into, can you guess, 188. Then it repeats again. We load from collision point pointer 188 and we store it into the next user screen byte. And then we increase Y again and then we load it into accumulator from 189 and store that and so on and so on until we get to the end. And that's the end right there. I don't have to write this. This is enough right here. So we can go down here and just press etc. So I hope you learn a little bit from that. So I'm going to save this here and we have that updated. <clears throat> and uh, let's do a test and I want to do it on purpose because we're going to export and test. Oh, wait a second. You know what? I didn't even set it up. This is how coding can get very confusing in NestMaker. I'm not even using this. I'm using the old do load screen data. So we have to go to project and we have to go to project settings and we have to go to the script settings. And then we have to go over here where we go to load all subroutines. And we want to change that. As you can see, my NestMaker Plus folder appears right under there. So it makes it very easy to get to my code. I don't have to go into here and go here and start looking for things. You know, going all this stuff. I go to the base and it's right here. Subroutines, bam, we go load all subroutines. I'm going to pick, click edit so it opens up here. And now we're going to go to... Uh, We gotta look for the file. Do load screen data. As you remember, I made a plus folder. So all I gotta do is go here and type in plus and do that. That's it. <clears throat> and I save it. And now we got our new subroutines and now we're loading the plus here into the new do load screen data. If I did this correct, it should we should have an error about complaining about the missing variables we didn't put. So let's test it out. And there we go. Look at this. Now, you're looking at errors and make sure that you have to solve an error from the top and then go down. Because usually you might get more errors that don't really mean anything until you fix the top one. So you don't don't scroll down and panic. And you see all these errors and stuff. You start from the top one, and you can see it's complaining. Some and the problem is located in my plus in my do load screen data at 181. So if we go here, if we go here to the do load screen data, and we go to 181. Look at here. This is 181. User screen by zero. What the problem? It looks correct to me. It says unknown label. It doesn't know the label because it doesn't exist and we have to put it in. Same thing of 184. If you go to 184, use a screen by four and you can see use a screen by two at 187. So it's going to say 187 here. You can see the pattern. I didn't put these variables in that we need to store it in. So we got to do that. <clears throat> so we're going to uh, get out here. We're going to get this error message in Nest Maker. And, uh, we're going to have to go to project and project settings and go to uh, the zero page RAM. We're going to go to the zero page RAM and we're going to make a new, we're going to make a new zero page variable and you call it user screen byte. 
Oh, we have a problem here. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go use a screen byte, right? And we're gonna put eight bytes, uh, seven, no, eight, eight. Yep, zero to seven, eight. Now we have a problem here. It should work, right? I'm gonna go to export and test. Now look at this, one eighty one. 181 use a screen byte zero use a screen byte one and two my problem was I didn't call it use a screen byte zero but I don't want to do that these these are like seven different names this is uh, this is a waste of time here I don't want to do this this is uh, you know it's wasteful I don't want to make like each byte separate I want to put on one thing that's what this maker is there for you know let me get there that error so the reason I got these errors is because uh, we go to project settings and we go to the uh, back to zero page RAM and we go to our user screen byte. Yeah, I can call it zero uh, and then it will be correct and then I have to make a new one and do one, but that's stupid. So we got eight here. Uh, you see how some has two here, you got four, because you can use, uh, it will, when you go use more than one for whatever you need to do. You know, maybe you have a password feature and you need 24, you're controlling the palettes and you need more. So we do the user screen byte on here. We got eight of them. That's zero through seven. So what I'm going to do is for the first one's zero, but you don't need no button. You take that out and then you go to one. We can keep that, but you got to put a plus in there. Plus one. This represents user screen byte plus one. That means from the first user screen byte is going to add one and go to that one. And then we got a plus two. And then we got a plus three, and then we got a plus four, and then we got a plus five, then we got a plus six, and then we got a plus seven. And now we save. So now I have all my user screen bytes, and I test it, there should be no errors. If I got a bit of my right arm on $100, let's do this. Export test. And look at that. There are no errors. The ROM runs blank with no problems. ASM is not complaining. And now we got our user screen bytes set up. Now, thanks to Chronicle of Legends, we have the bonus. And the bonus is, is a small addition that can also give you access to special tile types. What's the special tile types? Well, if you go into Nestmaker and you go to Project Settings, and you go into the uh, script. No, we're not going to script settings. Sorry about that. Uh, we go into the screen info. You can see here you got these user bytes. But look at here. You got towel type 14. You got eight different towels. And you got towel type 15. You got eight different towels. This is pretty awesome. So if you go to project settings and you go to script settings and you go all the way down to the towels, you get 16 towels. But the 15 and 14, you can switch them through different screens. So that gives you eight tiles for each 14 and 15, but you can only use one out of those eight tiles at once. So this is great for your extra things. Like I use it for uh, light and shadow, or you can use it like for if you got water and lava. Maybe you don't want a separate water or a separate uh, lava tile. You're not going to have water and lava in the same place. So, you know, you can have water in one of those tiles and put lava in another one and you just change it and then you don't waste your space on the other tiles. Now you have, you know, you work around with that and you get more tiles. It's pretty damn great. You need it. These are one of the features we need in Nestmaker. So all he says is you load this special types to the 195 and that's right before 196. So code, we just put that. And then we go here and we paste it there and we only need one so let's copy this and I'm gonna go to nest maker let's do it again let's let's test now and see what happens you know what we're gonna get we're gonna get an error <coughs> excuse me so 206 unknown label Of course, you know what we have to do. We have to go back to project settings and we want to go to our zero page RAM. And we want to go and add.
a new variable and we'll paste what we got. It's special tile type. Close that. And we test again. And it should not complain. And look at that. Everything still runs great. Now we have our user screen bytes and we have our special tile type. Also, he did give some instructions to run the tile types. If you need it, you have to uh, you have to load in the special tile type. The first ones from the first bits over here, and the second one gets stored from the bits over here. The other two, we don't know what it's used for. It could be used for something that Joe has said, but we have to figure that out. And we also, um, where do you put these at? Uh, you put these at in your tile set. That means you actually have to code eight tiles within your, uh, your tile code. I have not used it yet, but I will use it in the future. So I will do a tutorial on that. But right here, this is all you have to do to set up these. And it was good to make your own folder and change the scripts. So that way, if you make a new NestMaker file, you don't have to worry about it. And this is the whole tutorial, thanks to uh, Chronicles of Legend on how to get your user bytes up and I will show you an example real quick. I'm gonna load my uh, Zimbi project I've been working for like the last two years. It's not just a project, it's also a huge template of things because I'm really trying to make a fast way to make Nest Maker games. So I'll give you a great example of what you can do with user screen bytes. And I'm gonna work on this in the next episode probably. So if I go over, I'm trying to see, I gotta figure something, is it here? Yeah, look at this, there's nothing here. And look at my screen bytes here. I got the menu here. Uh, let me test it out first. Let me place my character, I think right about, let's go to collision. Yeah, I gotta swap here. I place my character here, so it won't fall down. And it's gonna, it's gonna disappear. And let's run it first. I'm gonna go ahead and run that. Slow it down a little bit. Oh, got a problem here. Uh, let me place the player right here. Let's try that again. All right, there we go. Here, show this one. All right. So this is my uh, this is my menu engine. Let's turn on the music real quick. This is my end menu engine here. As you can see, I can move, I can move the cursor. And I can select where I want to go to. So here I have the menu X. This is where the menu starts. I use this three here to go to the third block here. And I use this other three to go to the third block over here. And then the uh, text number is 255. So let's go to the text over here and I'm gonna go to 255. And uh, the other ones don't work, you have to set it up yourself. I figured that out. And look at this, here it is. I picked 255, new game, password options, and you got new game, password, and options. So this doesn't really, it just, sh that's the way to look at the menu here. Then we're gonna go back. There we go, and we go back to screen info. And then you can see here, I have, I have two menu items set up. It's actually three, because we start at number zero. So we got three menu items here. And then here are the warps. As you can see, I got up to four warps and I'm only using like the first three. Uh, oh, wait a second. I had a menu X or XY. Hmm. I gotta figure it out what I put here. There's so much code and stuff. But anyway, I put zero. I put zero. So if I go to overworld, it's supposed to go, I think it's supposed to go over here. I forgot. This may be the wrong menu. Let's see.
Oh, it works. I don't know where I'm going at, but it's working. So anyway, um, I went to zero one. Oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot about that. Let's go back here. I forgot that the first warp is actually here. You can see I have warp into screen location two two, warp out of screen location zero one. So two two is the is where I put the character at the hide in the menu, and I go zero one. I'm warping to the underworld. So if I go to the underworld, you can see I'm right here. And that was the screen that you saw. I was warping into here. So what happens if I want to go straight to the game? Uh, you know, I can change that warp and it'll go straight to the game. You know the deal. But the cool thing is you're seeing what I can do with the user screen bytes. Uh, here's another cool thing. So we're in this stage right here, right? We're in this stage. And here's the stage right here. I have made an item system. And... I use the user screen bytes. So you can see I got item A, item B, item C, and item D. And I got a special number here, 144 and 162. These, uh, uh, these store the items. Let me see if I can find the item code to show you how it works with the user screen bytes. I will go to script settings. And hopefully, it should be somewhere here. There's so much code I've been working on. Uh, item change. Let's go there. It should be here. Yeah, here we goes. So, let's put this over here. Let's get the thing here. Okay, so look. What I have to do is this. I have... <clears throat> excuse me. I have items A, B, C, and D. And I have the X, Y, Y, and Z, Z here. You can see the X. The first number detects if the item is broken or not. And the next three bits detect if the item type number. That three is just like the tile uh, code we saw earlier, special tile. You can have up to eight with those three digits. But since only X is one, you only have zero or one. Then I have room number, which takes up the last four bits. And hex, as you can see this hex here, you got two numbers here. I use one whole number for the rooms. But the problem is there's 255 rooms and I'm not going to do 255 here. It's not enough room to keep all of that. So the cool thing that I do is I actually, if you look here in the overworld, you got these rooms, right? And they're in rows of 16. It doesn't matter what row I'm at from up and down. So I could just delete that, remove that information and just keep the single room. Now I'm going to detect these single rooms and I can detect it from 0 through 16. Things get complicated here. It has to do with this crate here. So in the screen info, uh, I have to go to 144. Let's get the calculator out. Oh, this is a lot I'm talking about over here. But uh, let's get the uh, scientific calculator. No, no, we need the programmer. Yeah, so we go to, uh, we go to hex. I think we go to hex, let's see. No, we have to go to, well, the hex is 90, so let's just type that. You can see 144 and 90, so I press 90 there. And then in binary, you can see that the, I have, I have a one already there. That means it would be broken. I have to check, uh, let's see. We, we check an item A, you can see I got the user screen byte here. That's user screen by two, so you go zero, one, two. Two is right here, that's 144. First, I remove the first numbers just to keep the room. I store it in temp A, and then I store, wow, I don't remember any of this code, but I'm comparing, basically I'm just comparing here. I uh, comment this, and then I'm checking what it's equal to, and I jump F, uh, if it matches, if it doesn't, I jump to the next item and do the check again. If the room, the room number, that's what I'm doing. Okay, I remember now. I'm comparing to the room number. So, see, you got player one object. Let's do this. I'm gonna make it easy for you. So, player one object, it loads the number that is stored for the player, for the player, player object. 
one. <laughs> and then that goes, that loads, oh, okay, loads the number that is stored in a player object into X. Register. Okay. Let me zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that loads that, and then it loads uh, object screen X. So it loads the object screen of current player object into accumulator. All right. And then, oh. I and and allows you to keep and remove bits out of a number. So I'm remove I'm removing removes the first four bits out of the byte. So I remove it so I can get a matching number and then I store it into temp A. So Temp, you got temp variables to use for programming. So this stores accumulator to temp A. And then I use temp A. So here now, of course, I'm just loading user byte, no, user screen byte into accumulator. Remember, accumulate like the calculator. Then I gotta remove again. So we'll just copy this. Removes the first four bytes, bits of the byte. And then com CMP compares the accumulator accumulator to temp A. If the room, so what we're basically doing here, this whole thing, just to sum it up, is checking if room number matches stored item room number. So what happens is we're checking if the room number of where we're at matches the room number I put the item in on the box. If it matches, I put BQ. So if it's equal to zero, oh, okay, we did a compare, right? Sorry. Uh, we did a compare. So BQ just means if equal branch, you know, branch equal. If number matches is equal branch, branch to label, which is, of course, store item A. Now, what happens is if it doesn't branch, if it's not equal, it will just skip this, it'll ignore it and jump over here. And it'll just do the code in the bottom, which is, I'm just gonna put uh, jumps to label. These are, these are labels. So if the, room does, if the room matches, it goes to store item A, which you can see is right here. Does that, I don't know how that spacing is there. Let's get rid of it, I don't care for it. And then if it doesn't, it just skips and checks item B. Pretty cool. So <clears throat> let's say it does matches. It loads the user screen by two into accumulator. So I'm just gonna copy it again. And then I remove, as you can see here, look, I got a one and a whole bunch of zeros. So I'm only keeping the first keeps the first byte, uh, the first, sorry, bit, and removes the rest. And I'm using that 
to check if the item is if there's something in there or not and I can see here that what I did was I use a one to say if the box is full and then a zero if the box is not full so if the box so we go do here we're gonna put a, a little space here and to summarize this this checks if the item box has already been broken sorry for my broken English but whatever this checks the item box has already been broken so if if it's not B and E if it's not equal to any if not equal then branch to label which is of course what you see there continue so continue here if not if it doesn't equal it goes to switch item so it just jumps you know jumps to label So, if the uh, user screen byte, uh, it, it, I break that same user screen byte down, which is 144 or 162 or whatever numbers I got for the items, and I remove that check, this is where I check if the item box has already been broken, so I can't get the same item again. If it does, it goes to continue. So now, again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm loading, this, I'm loading the information again. Right, and now I have these LSRs. I forgot what they call it. something rotate, left shift rotate. That's what it's called, left shift rotate. So basically, an LSR is shifts the number to the right. Oh wait, shift something shift right. Yeah. I don't, anyway, it shifts the number to the right. Also, you can call it as divides by two. So what I'm doing is, as you remember, from up here, see the Y, Y, Y? I want to check it, but the problem is I can't check it from there. So I actually push it over to the end. So I have to push it uh, one, two, three, four spots. So if you go back here, look, you can see I have LSR four times. And look, now it pushes it there. I have to remove the rest of the data too. It could no matter if I put and first or afterwards. I just put it afterwards to clean it up. So I remove it removes the first five bytes. Or clears it, whatever you want to do. Now I store at the temp B. And now here's an EOR. Forgot what it means, but all it does is it allows me to flip the bits. And I'm flipping the X one. I'm flipping it and telling it the box has been broken. That item's gonna come out. And then so flips the first bit. Yeah, whatever's marked one is gonna get flipped. Then I store it back into label. I'm just tired. I'm stores to <laughs> label. You know what it is. Stores to label. Okay. Then when it's done, it jumps to it jumps to label. So it jumps to switch item. Let's take a let's take a trip to switch item. You can see that there's here's the other items. We're gonna go all the way to switch item. Switch item, change facing direction, and this is a macro. You already know what macros are, so I change the direction. Why do I have different directions? And then, you know, I forgot what I forgot what change facing direction is. Let's go to uh, if you go to scripts and go to define scripts. Hey, here's all the scripts here. So let's click on change facing direction. Change facing direction. But look, I can't read it. Where is it at? 
and it's all the way in the bottom here. You're gonna have to grab this and push it up, and now you can see it. Object, that's the temp. What should be the new facing direction? Okay, so change face direction, I grab the object, and then I change the direction. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, why am I using directions? Let me show you. We're gonna go get aim objects and check this. I got the uh, health pickup. And you can see here, here's, uh, if I go to object details, you can see here that I have a different item on every direction. I got default small hearts, energy pork bun, giant heart, shurikens, diamonds, big diamonds, bomb, clear screen, you know, all that stuff. So this is how I can fit more items into one instead of wasting all these limited spots that we have in Nest Maker. So let's get back to the game. So here's the first box. Obviously, there must be an item in there. Uh, let's go back to the conquer later. One zero zero. I don't know what that means. I'm, I'm gonna count my fingers. We have zero. We have one. We have ten. Eleven. And one hundred. So it should be the fifth item. Two, three, four, five. That's diamonds. We don't have a diamond there. What do we have? There's my item change behavior. Let's just, I don't know what we have here, but anyway, the whole point is, you can see I have two boxes here. I'm gonna break this one. I have the pork bun. I was in room zero in a match, so that item was the pork bun. Here's gonna be a small heart. But, oh, I didn't get rid of those enemies. I put a lot of enemies here. So anyway, uh, here's another one. That's the big heart. Uh, visible hit, that's crazy. I don't know where that's coming from. Anyway, so I go back. And I'm going to break this car again. And look at it, it's the small heart. And if I go back here. This is where the pork bun was at. And now it's a small heart. So, here. I treat my scramble egg. Okay. So here, you can see that I was using the user screen bytes to control what items come out in those boxes. And that's some of the things you can do with the user screen bytes. Let me show you another thing here. Look at this screen here. I'm gonna place the player here. And let's test it out. You know what? I'm not going to show it. Look, I can go in here and we'll show it. I'm going to open this door. And here you go. As you can see, my character has changed to top view. Don't worry about the blinking. I have to add some more animation frames there. But I'm top view now. And. This is, a, this is an example of the special tiles, but I didn't switch it yet, but I use it for lighting. Anyway, so it's top view now because, and now I'm gonna close this, it's gonna reset the game here. But this is where we was gonna be at. So, if I go to screen info, you can see here I got a number two. And I use that alone to change my physics and everything. As I remember, if we go to here, we have a three, and that's for uh, 2D with some uh, tile animation. And look at this. If I go here, I got a road here, and I got four, and four controls tile animation as well, but it also creates a nice, um, if you look at here, it creates a little nice, racing uh, engine I've been working on and now I use that to control the pallets to make the road move and then I got the uh, 
I have some talent animation for turns. Still working on the 3D objects, only have it on the left side. Uh, now you can see the talent animation is running and this is all because I have number four. So these are a lot of cool things you can do with the, uh, there's like a lot of cool things that you can do with the user screen bytes and that's why we need them. Very, very important. So uh, that's it for that. You know, I can talk about this all day, but I hope that you learned a lot from this and that we're going to keep going with the tutorials, but we're going to do some other cool things. You see, I'm going to start making clean little plugins that everybody can use that you can just drag and drop. The whole thing is that the way I've been coding is that what if you can add new features to Nestmaker without touching the code anymore after you code the first time? And it can help a lot of people who really don't know how to code. And I wanted to stick with the whole, you know, no coding thing on Nestmaker. Of course, you're going to have to take a little more code. But uh, it's really has helped me. I've been doing this for like the last two years. And I learned a lot. And, you know, I really want to work on a really cool uh, NES game and whatnot. But uh, I want my friends and my fellow nest makers to also learn. We should all like get better together and, you know, make some cool games. And at least, you know, maybe you want a feature and you don't know how to do it. And at least we can help each other, you know. So thanks for watching. And uh, I know this is also a music channel. I got more music coming. And then we're going to have some music tutorials also on making NES music. But uh, I'm just doing some tests over here. Just checking some things out. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful uh, day, night, wherever you are. And I'll see you next time.